Are you interested in longevity but don't know where to start and don't have thousands or maybe tens of thousands of dollars to invest in testing? Here are four at-home tools that are less than $100 each that you can use to get a sense of your current health status and potential longevity. I'm Kayla Barnes-Lentz. I have been studying female longevity for over a decade. I own a longevity medicine clinic. I speak all over the world on this topic and I have measured and published my biomarkers along with my protocol online. So today we're gonna to be talking about at-home tools that you can use to get a sense of your longevity and health status. I do wanna say that the gold standard of labs would be actual diagnostic blood labs, urine, imaging, but these items, I use these tools on a daily or weekly basis just to get a baseline understanding of my health and I can also track that over time. So I don't wanna say that these are a complete replacement for labs. I highly encourage you to do comprehensive labs at least you know once a year, twice a year if you can, four or five times a year if you're like me, but you can subscribe and see videos on all of the other labs that I'm doing. You can also go to protocol.kaylabarnes.com to see all the labs, the frequencies in which I do them, the costs, and a lot of my results. So let's get into it. So up first, we're gonna be talking about grip strength. So this is a grip strength tester. It's about $25 on Amazon, and grip strength is a marker of longevity. The reason why it can be seen as a marker for longevity is that it's essentially a proxy for or overall strength. So what we don't recommend is just training grip strength to have a higher number on the grip strength tester, right? So your hand may get stronger. There are tools out there where you can just train your hand, but then it's not really gonna be an accurate measurement of overall strength because it's not going to be indicating that you're having higher levels of strength. Overall, you're just gonna be training your hand. I usually land and I have a lot of different uh, photos of this. We can do it maybe at the end, but um, around 93 pounds. So I am 34 and that puts me in about the 99th percentile for grip strength. I don't train grip strength, but what I do do is I do a lot of um, exercises such as dead hangs and pull-ups that do train um, grip strength a bit, but it's really just a measurement of overall strength, which we know from my body composition scans that I do have high muscle mass overall. So this is the grip strength tester. Okay, so the next device that we're gonna be looking at is a spirometer. So this is going to measure our lung health. We know that COPD and lower lung respiratory issues are also one of the top killers. This typically would impact people that are either smokers or receiving secondhand smoke, but this spirometer is a good way to just keep a pulse on your lung health. So this is going to give you a few measurements. So this is going to give you your FEV1, which is forced expiratory volume in one second. So it's the amount of air exhaled in the first second of the test. It will range based on age, but the app that the Mir one syncs to will actually tell you where you land and you can measure improvements over time. So this exact model ran about 139, but you can also get them for about 60 to $65 online. We are also looking at the PEV, which is the peak expiratory flow, and that's gonna be the maximum speed of breath essentially. So depending on demographics, it's typically between 400 and 700 per minute for healthy adults. So all that you do is you take this, you blow into it. I'm not gonna do the full out right now, um, but you blow into it and then you receive your output. So you can do this once a week. Um, you know, how do we improve lung health? Definitely cardiovascular training, things like VO2 max training, things like sprinting, long runs. These are all gonna help your cardiovascular system and your lung health. So that's the next test. The next little at-home device is a blood pressure monitor. So this one is Omron. You can do a quick blood pressure check at home. You wanna have legs uncrossed. You wanna be in a relatively relaxed state and you would just apply the cuff and start a blood pressure check. When it comes to blood pressure for women, I mean, really the general standard is less than 120 over 80 or 120 over 80 is good. Less than that is good, but we really don't wanna get into super high numbers. If you're looking at 120 to 129 over 80, then you're starting to get into the elevated. And then when you're at 130 to 139 over 80 to 89, you're looking at hypertension. So it's really important to maintain healthy blood pressures. A few things that can impact your blood pressure for women, you can have fluctuations during your menstrual cycle, of course, during pregnancy and even menopause. But there are a few things that will really help to maintain proper blood pressure. 
Of course, you always want to consult with a doctor if they recommend a medication. Um, you need to be working with your practitioner and not just taking these tips. These tips might be supportive, but of course, you always want to work with a doctor. You don't want to smoke. You would ideally limit alcohol, have a healthy diet, at least 150 minutes of moderate exercise per week, um, reducing stress, getting high quality sleep. Even one night of poor sleep can increase your blood pressure. So these are all really important things, but an at-home blood pressure monitor is a really great tool. And then it's really important when we're doing these measurements, if there's not an app that's built in to track them over time, you could put them into an Excel sheet or some sort of program, but it's really nice to see where you're trending. Next, we have a body composition scale. So this scale is by a company called Withings. Um, this is the most premium model that they have, but they do have ones for under a hundred dollars. And this is gonna be looking at body composition. So to me, yes, weight matters, but body composition also matters a lot. So this is going to tell you your fat mass, your muscle mass, it will tell you, of course, your weight. It will also track changes on an app of your body mass. It will let you know if you're trending up in fat and down in muscle or trending up in muscle and down in fat. And it will actually give you a visual representation of where you stack up against other Withings users. So as an example, it will give you an image of a woman or a man, and it will show you arms, torso, legs, where your muscle mass is high, medium, low, very high, and the same thing with fat mass. Do you have more than average Withings users fat mass in your legs or abdominum? Uh, or any of the other areas. So it's incredibly um, helpful in terms of tracking and knowing where you're at. So this is a body composition scale or a bioimpedance scale. This is from Withings, but I highly recommend you understand your body composition and it can be really energizing to be able to track the improvements that you're making right in the comfort of your own home. So the last thing that we're gonna talk about for at-home use and just a little bit of a diagnostic of health status, and this one is not under $100. This one, you can do a $40 per month membership or $199 per year, and then the monitors are $184 per month for a month supply of these monitors. I do have, I think, two months free with uh, Code Kayla. We can link it in the show notes, um, but this is a Levels Continuous CGM. So Levels essentially, overlays their data with something called a Dexcom. This is a continuous glucose monitor. And we have another video that I kind of walked through my entire day of glucose, but this is really helpful because it's super important uh, not to develop diabetes. So we wanna always have our waking blood sugar less than 100. When you wake up, it should always be less than 100. Something more around 70 is definitely better. But once you pass the 100 or even 99, you're into pre-diabetic levels. We really wanna avoid that. So by wearing a continuous blood glucose monitor, you can actually see morning blood glucose, you can see your response to different meals. So every time you eat, you're going to have a glucose response. Ideally, you don't allow your blood sugar spike to be more than 30 points um, at each meal. There's a variety of different things that you can do to manage, better manage glucose. Some of them being taking a short walk or doing some air squats after a meal. It can help to buffer that glucose response. Another thing that you can do is always eating fat protein first, the carbs or anything sweet like fruits last. And the third thing that you can do is having a little bit of apple cider vinegar before meals. It's really helpful to use a blood glucose monitor. Just understand your baseline. Again, you want to catch anything that is going wrong with your blood sugar. We know that only 6% of Americans are metabolically healthy. Don't let that be used. This is one of the ways to understand your glucose levels and start to optimize them. These are some of my favorite at home uh, biometric devices. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment section and I'll be happy to let you know my thoughts.